For about the past year, I have been using a Samsung Galaxy S5 as my daily driver, and I found it to be a very well-performing device. So nice CPU, 2GB of RAM, minus 16GB of storage, and it has a beautiful, beautiful 1080p display. Nice vibrant colours, good contrast, nice response times, and the camera on the device is quite good as well. So all in all, I found the Samsung S5 to be a very nice smartphone. However, as I said on the previous video, I was looking for a device specifically to do some advanced network testing stuff, but also, of course, with that, a phone that is a good daily drive as well. So I purchased an LG G4, and I must say, the LG G4 makes the S5 seem very slow which is something I didn't really expect. Like I said, I, I find the S5 to be quite fast and certainly not noticeably slow in daily use. If we just take a look at the LG G4 sort of spec sheet, it's based on the Snapdragon 808 platform, has a six core CPU, three gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. It also has an eight megapixel front facing camera and a 16 megapixel back facing camera which is laser autofocus and quite a wide aperture. The phone also has a 3000 mAh battery which is quite large for a phone and also has a Quad HD screen at 2560 by 1440. The screen has Gorilla Glass 3 so it's quite resistant to scratches though I've got a screen protector on mine. And just finally, the LG G4 came with Android Lollipop, although I've since got the upgrade for mine for Android 6. So let's get into the sort of full review now. So the screen on the LG G4 is Quad HD. It's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Gets quite bright if you set it to 100%, but it is perfectly usable at like 40, 50%, even in quite bright conditions. Viewing angles are good, the contrast is good, colours are lovely, and it's just a very nice panel. Performance through the menus, despite the fact it's got a Quad HD dis display, so obviously it's quite a lot of work on the, for the device to do. Performance is very good, moving through menus is very quickly, and that's actually where it's especially notable, say, compared to the S5. Everything is just very, very smooth, and even browsing very intensive websites on the LG G4 works very, very smoothly which is just very nice, and also certainly having like multiple tabs open and gaming and loading games is very much quicker than the S5. The 3 gigabytes of RAM helps a lot with multitasking, so say switching between uh, apps quickly. It doesn't take ages to sort of load the apps that are open and switching from an app to say the sort of background, so sort of the app desk thing is just tends to happen instantly as opposed to on the S5 where it can at worst take a few seconds. The LG G4 also has a Cat6 modem in it so it can use 4G plus in available areas which again helps to make browsing and downloading apps rather quicker than say with a Cat4 modem. In terms of the cameras, which are quite important to me because I like taking photos, uh, the back facing camera is 16 megapixels with laser autofocus and it also has optical image stabilisation. The image quality is very good and crisp and the image is nice and sort of contrasty and punchy in good light and also low light. The autofocus is very quick and generally quite accurate and will also focus quite nicely up close as well. The phone also has optical image stabilisation which is actually quite impressive. So, so I was testing it with say full on digital zoom where you expect the image to be sort of wobbling all over the place and it was actually managing to stabilise it pretty much so the image was completely stable even with me sort of wriggling the phone around a reasonable amount. In fact it was so good it was almost a bit, I wouldn't say dis sort of disturbing because you're sort of wriggling the phone around in your hands and the image is staying completely still. So that's very good, in fact it's probably better than some cameras, some sort of proper cameras are in fact. There are also some very good camera modes including this full, fully manual mode where you can say control all the exposure settings to say 
the exposure level with a little dial on the side here. You can control the white balance, as you can see there. In fact, you can even set the phone to record raw photos as well, alongside a whole array of other settings. So it's a very nice camera app for either those who just want to just very quickly take a picture for Snapchat or Instagram, or for those who want to go to a full depth into sort of manual photography. The front facing camera is 8 megapixels, obviously image quality is not as good as the back facing camera because the front facing camera has very small lens and very small sensor, however it's more than usable in my experience and yields some pretty good results. Certainly a complete world away from the front facing camera on the S5 which is not very good at all. Another very important feature for smartphones to have or other characteristic is battery life. Now the battery life in the LG D4 I've found to be very good so I've been using the phone since about 9am and it's now 11pm and the battery level on this is 35% and I've used this out in sort of sunlight, I've had the screen brightness up, I've done some pretty sort of heavy web browsing and video watching and also I happen to live in an area with no slash very borderline phone signal which means that phones do naturally go through battery rather quicker. However, like I said, the battery life on this is generally very good. Certainly I never found myself running out at the end of the day even after incredibly intensive phone use, to so say a brightness is ramped up to 80%, constant use of GPS, and also web and video use for hours on end. So that's very, very nice. Now, I'd say the phone does seem to get ever so slightly hot when you're doing, well not hot, warm, when you're doing very intensive stuff, but you tend to get that with phones anyway. In terms of other useful characteristics the device has, it has 32GB of onboard storage which is very nice and possibly sort of a minimum that you'd want on a phone at this point in time. 16GB doesn't leave you with all that much storage at all once you've got apps installed and of course this the camera on this will shoot 4K video at which the device storage will go very rapidly. This also has expandable storage to a micro SD card slot as well. The phone also has NFC and an infrared port as well as many phones of this sort of price point do. Now talking of the price, this is roughly a year old flagship and I picked mine up for roughly £200 on a online auction site aka eBay which I thought was pretty good going and I also got with it a separate uh, battery and charging sort of enclosure so you can see there is the battery and a little micro USB port there for charging it so if I want I can carry two batteries with me and the case on the phone quite easily uh, slips off so I can fit the second battery if I need to although Unlike some laptops, you can't switch the batteries while the device is on, you have to sort of switch it off and then switch the batteries, it won't stay powered on for a short while while you swap the batteries around. Finally something to talk about is sound quality. Now this does have a rear facing speaker, although it doesn't really actually sound like it. The sound quality is very good and certainly when you put your hand over the speaker the sound quality does not rapidly diminish at all and nor does it sort of affect the sound quality or volume that much and certainly the sound quality in general is quite is pretty impressive actually it's quite sort of a rich well um, broadcast sound it's not sort of too waiting on the high on the high sort of high pitch sound and it does represent low low frequency sounds quite well as well Although, of course, being a phone, you're not going to get really deep pumping bass out of it. But certainly, it does have a nice natural sound to it, which is very, very nice. As with most LG devices, the volume and power button is on the back of the device instead of on the side. Now, I haven't had any issues with it being like that, despite having used 
uh, devices that have the volume and power buttons on the side for ages and ages. Now also with mine I got two cases, two backs, so this has got the leather one fitted on at the moment although I do also have a black one as well. So I guess to conclude I really like the LG G4, really nice phone, available for quite low amounts of money, so really good value for money based on the sort of second hand prices they're going for at the moment. Great camera, great screen, great sort of internal specs which means awesome performance through sort of applications and apps, lots of storage, just really nice smartphone really. So um, thanks for watching and I hope this review was helpful.